Hello from the Forcetronics YouTube channel and welcome to how to protect your Arduino design part one. And this is going to be a two part series where we look how to make your design electrically rugged, protect it from common ways that it can be damaged or destroyed electrically. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Forcetronics channel, and let's get started. When I say protecting your Arduino electrically, Against what? What am I talking about? Well, common things are power supply over voltages. A big one is I.O. pins. Over voltage, over current. You know, if you damage a, a digital pin or an analog pin and it's integral to your design and that pin is done, you have to get a whole new MCU. And then also I'm going to talk about ESD or electrostatic discharge, but I'm going to save that for part two. And these tips are not meant to be not necessarily meant to be implemented if you're just tinkering around or if you're just prototyping but if you're making a design that you want to sit in your house for years and you want it to work these are the type of things you want to add to your design also if you're designing something for mass market these are the things you want to add to your design as well to make sure it's electrically rugged and durable so first let's talk about over voltages and namely over voltages on the power supply bus and before I get started, I'll mention a lot of these protection methods involve diodes. So I'm assuming you have a basic understanding of diodes. If not, I encourage you to look up diodes. And over voltages on power supply lines can happen for a number of reasons. Once again, they're not common if you, if you did a design well. But if they do happen, you risk damaging at least some of the critical parts on your design. So a common tool for protecting against over voltages is the Zener diode. And what's nice about the Zener diode, or I shouldn't say what's nice about it, what's special about it, and you can see the symbol down there. It looks like a regular diode, but the cathode line is a little funky. It looks like, almost like a, a Z, people say, for, for the word Zener. And the whole idea is this diode is meant to be used in reverse bias, meaning you don't ever really forward bias it, at least for applications that I know of, you don't use a Zener diode in forward bias. In reverse bias, there's a thing if you reverse bias a diode too much, it goes into avalanche. And usually that's a bad thing, but that's what a Zener diode is des designed for. Once it reaches a cer certain voltage level, it'll turn on and conduct to try and maintain that voltage level. So it's almost like a, you can think of it almost like a poor man's voltage regulator. So the whole idea here is the Zener diode will have a Zener voltage, and when that voltage gets to the Zener voltage and tries to go higher, the Zener diode will conduct. So if you see in this diagram down here, I have a DC source and I have you know, some load. And let's say the DC source is 5 volts and my Zener diode is 5.5. As long as that supply stays at you know, 5.5 or lower, you're fine. But let's say it gets some kind of transient or spike because uh, you know, someone plugs an external power supply in that's too high or, or the uh, load gets a little unstable and you get a high spike. The Zener diode will turn on and conduct to prevent that, keep that spike at 5.5 volts or below. Let's quick look at a Zener diode data sheet so you get a feel of the important spec you're looking for. Okay, here's a Zener diode family from On Semiconductor. And this is a more of a surface mount design, but they have through hole designs. What I want to show you here is the Zener voltage is the critical spec. So let me pan up a little bit. So here's the Zener voltage, and you can see they have a bunch of different models depending on the Zener voltage you're looking for. So for instance, let's say you you're working with a supply that's 3.3 volts. And uh, if you're familiar with the NRF24 L01 transceiver, that has a maximum voltage of 3.6 volts. So if you go above that, you risk damaging that transceiver. So with that knowledge, if I wanted to make sure I protect that transceiver, I would look for a Zener that's about 3.6. You could even do 3.5, but the idea is, let's say your nominal voltage is 3.3, I would want this one because it's 3.6, so it's gonna protect me against high swings. Now. I should say that there is a tolerance, so you can see you know, the manufacturer basically says it could go as high as 3.78. But once again, if it's a spike and it goes to 3.7, you're probably not going to damage your NRF24. So that's how you protect against over voltages on the power supply line. Let's talk about protecting against I.O. pin over current and over voltage, and let's start with the current aspect. The simplest way 
to prevent high currents is with a resistor. Now, whether it's your ADC or it's your digital pin, the, the more worry here is the digital pin. So let me start with a scenario. You know, whether the digital pin is set for writing or reading, it can sync and it can source a certain amount of current. And so if you connect a, you know, a five volt write to ground, you're probably gonna short out that pin because I think on the uh, at mega 328P, it's like 40 milliamps is, is the max. So that's, that's the risk of getting too much current. It's probably not gonna be too much current flowing into the Arduino because it's, it's typically high impedance, but it's mainly flowing out. So adding a resistor is a great way to do it. Now you have to be careful on the value of the resistor because you want the resi resistor to be small enough that it doesn't really affect the circuit. You're not getting a large voltage drop over the resistor. And like I said, with a digital pin or an ADC pin, you typically have a fairly high impedance on the input or output of, of the pin. And then typically it's gonna be connected to a device, maybe another chip or a sensor, and that's gonna have a fairly high impedance. With that said, how do you choose your resistance value? Let's take a digital pin, for instance. You don't wanna turn a one into a zero, or more importantly, a zero into a one. So how much voltage can it drop? Let me use the Atmega 328P as an example. So the Atmega 328P has a 20 kilo ohm input pull up. If you set one of the digital pins for input and you set up for pull up, which basically means it's gonna pull that, that input high, there's a 20K resistance between that five volt line and the digital pin line. We wanna make sure, and also if you look at the 3.28P's data sheet, we, it basically says a logic low is defined as anything from ground or a little bit below ground to max of 0.3 times VCC. So we wanna make sure that, that the voltage does not get above 0.3 times VCC. And we wanna ensure that the current doesn't jump above 40 milliamps. So if we have you know, 20K, we wanna choose a resistor that's about, let's just say 1 20th the size of, of that, and that would just be 1K. And so if we had 1K, we would be fine. Let's say we had five volts and we had a 1K resistor, that's gonna be five milliamps, that 1K resistor is gonna allow at the most and then it's only going to drop 1 20th of 5 volts, which is going to be fairly low or well below the 0.3 times VCC. Now, if you want to be even safer, you can pick 500 ohms. Now, for ADC pins, now keep in mind, adding this resistor will affect the accuracy because it will drop a little bit of the voltage. So, uh, for me, a lot of times I don't worry as much on the ADC pin because typically the ADC pin is going to be linked to something else that's fairly high impedance. Now, if it's not, then you might want to add this, but digital pins is where I always use these current limiting resistors. Another thing you want to protect the I.O. pins against is over voltages. Now, one thing you could do is you could just use a Zener diode. We talked about that for the power supply levels. It's something you could definitely do. A Zener diode will work. But even a better protection method is the Schottky diode. And the Schottky diode, and the reason I say that is because they have a Schottky barrier diode that's made for exactly these purposes. Now, a Schottky diode almost looks like a Zener diode if you look down here, but it has even like almost like hooks at the end. So it's a little different. And what's special about a Schottky diode, it has a very low voltage drop. So if you look, you know, the standard voltage drop they always use for diodes, you know, academically is typically like 0.7 or 0.8 volts. For a Schottky diode, you only have about 0.5 to 0.45 volts. So it doesn't take much of a potential difference for it to turn on. And so how can we use that? Well, they have something called a Schottky barrier, barrier diode, and it's used exactly for this. In fact, they have it in three pin versions, so you can protect it. You can protect that IO trace from high voltages and low voltages, because guess what? A voltage that's too negative can also damage the pin. So here's a popular model number that I'm showing here. And the whole idea here is you have three pins, you know, one you connect to the pin you wanna protect, the other to ground and the other to VCC. And so for instance, the 
1 to ground will only turn on if ground becomes more positive than your I.O. pin and vice versa for VCC. So the idea here is let's say our Schottky diode has about a 0.4 voltage drop. So that means if we get a voltage here that goes above VCC plus 0.4 volts, it'll turn on and keep it, keep it at that voltage level or lower. And then if we get a voltage that goes negative 0.4 volts or lower than that, the other Schottky diode arm will turn on. And once again, it won't allow the voltage to go even lower. Now this is perfect for the Atmega 328P because its maximum is VCC plus 0.5 volts and ground, or I should just say negative 0.5 volts below ground. So this keeps you well within the margin there. And once again, I'm using the Atmega 328P just because it's the popular one on UNO. All these methods will apply for other chips used on Arduino boards. Just be careful because these numbers may change a little bit, so you need to adapt that to the pin you're choosing here. Or I shouldn't say the pin, the, the part you're choosing here. But once again, the Shockey diode is a great way, especially these three pin versions to protect it. And recently I had a design where, recently I had a design where I was reading in a trigger from another connection or from an external device. And I can't guarantee that that external device will always behave like it should. It's, it's not my design or if someone shoves something in there that, that shouldn't be there, uh, the Shockey diode here will protect me from that. So once again, you can use a Zener here. If you, if you have a low risk situation, you can always use a Zener, but you can always use a Schottky. And just to wrap this into the, the, the previous example, notice that if there is too much voltage here, this turns on and we have current flowing to VCC. Well, guess what? That will cause VCC to go up unless you have a way to shunt that off. And if you have a Zener diode there, that'll do it. So this plays right into that other protection method that we just talked about, uh, the overvoltage on the power supply bus. Okay, that's it for part one. In part two, I'm going to get into ESD. So if you have a digital pin that has a button on it, guess what? If someone has too much static on their hands, they touch that button, that electric shock jumps, your board is pretty much done or your MCU and a lot of things on there are pretty much done. So I'm going to talk about how to protect against that in part two. Once again, if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you back for part two. Thanks for watching.